So, is it road season yet? Yes. Forget Bugatti's big budgets, you just can't buy the sort of racing a Northern European one day brings. There's really no way to dictate how, and despite the UCI's best efforts, even where this sort of event will unfold. Might as well try and control the weather, which cooperated perfectly, though that may depend on whether you are watching or racing. Omloop het Nisblat began with a relatively large breakaway of eight riders, including some reasonably threatening second-tier names, with the favorite teams sitting up and blocking off the road for snacks. Until, of course, they realized there's a corner or a hill up ahead, in which case, full gas. Lotto Belasol's Lars Bach made the first probing move up the Kreuzberg at 70k to go, and FDJ's Johan Le Bon made another sortie over the Donderish cobbles a few k later. But it was Belkin's Sepp van Marke, the winner in 2012, who made the first big attack on the Tyenberg, historically Tom Bonin's favorite launch pad. As so frequently happened with Bonin, Van Marke's effort left him isolated at the front, but unlike Bonin, Van Marke and teammate Martin Vinance found Sky's Ian Stannard unusually willing to work with them. In literature class, we call that foreshadowing. Omega Pharma chased the move down, and the lead group, which had dropped to 16 in the blink of an eye with still 60k to go, decided that maybe it was time to slow up and regroup a bit, prompting another attack from Le Bon. Omega Pharma's Matteo Trentin bridged across just before the Eichenberg so that Omega Pharma wouldn't have to chase, prompting Belkin and Standard to reel them both back in. Omega Pharma's Tour of Qatar winner, Nikki Terpstra, made the next attack at 54k to go. Le Bon marked, Giant Shimano's Tree Stevenens bridged, they both got dropped in the Wolvenberg, half the break was caught, Sepp Van Marke then attacked the chase, Omega Pharma's Stan Vandenberg followed, the rest of the break was caught, everyone I just mentioned regrouped, but no one wanted to work with Terpstra, and by 44k to go, it was all back together. <sighs> okay. On the Leyberg, 2k later, BMC's Greg Van Avermet made his first appearance, though since he had only one glove on, I can only imagine that he hadn't had an easy time of it during the previous 10k's fireworks. A series of tight corners just afterwards at 41k to go saw a group of seven escape, including two FDJ riders, but Johan Afredo slid out 4k later at the foot of the day's final climb, the Molenberg. Terpstra used the climb to attack, Belkin's Lars Bomb kept him in sight, but the two Dutchmen couldn't cooperate, letting five of the previous seven escapees regroup over the next few k. Behind them, Sepp van Marke once again got nervous and elected to attack the chase. On the Lippehovenstraat cobbles at 28k to go, Terpstra attacked again, this time into a bank of motorcycles much to the chagrin of this wildly gesticulating official. The effort left only Baum and Sky's Edvald Bosenhagen in touch, but after the Belkin rider flatted, it was Terpstra's turn to refuse to pitch in. The Sky rider attacked a few k later, and Terpstra proved himself awfully short-memoried about the whole motorbikes thing. Eventually, he closed the gap, refused to work, vented some more anger, and at 16k to go, BMC's Taylor Finney brought everything back together. Sky's Ian Stannard attacked almost immediately, slipping neatly around the outside of this Garmin rider, marked by Finney's teammate Van Avermet, and after a small but not remarkable amount of moto help, the duo was clear. Behind them, Van Marke attacked the chase one last time, forming a second group with Terpstra and Bosenhagen, but despite the Omega Pharma rider's best cooperation of the day, the leaders would only dangle tantalizingly in front of him. Stannard led under the red kite, and Van Avermet came around a few hundred meters later, with Stannard's teammate Bosenhagen the likely winner if they're caught, he really doesn't have a choice. Stannard is generally a bad enough sprinter that this isn't a problem, but he plays it very well here, hanging to the barrier side of Van Avermet, waiting for him to check back, and then immediately jumping the other way, a surprisingly long distance from the line. It's a deceptively uphill drag, which puts even more emphasis on power and freshness than a normal classic sprint, and Stannard has three bike lengths almost immediately. Van Avermet does eventually get it spun up, but the damage is done and he can't get around, even as Stannard allows himself a somewhat pointless look back and seems to tire in the last meter or two. I'm Cosmo Catalano, and that's how the race was now won. These pickermen are such interesting people. They used to work like hell just for romance. But finally, the movie's notwithstanding. They all got tired of patches on their pants. They organized a union to get a living wage. They joined with other actors upon a living stage. Now, newspaper men are such interesting people. When they know they've got a people's fight to wage. Ting a ling a ling, newspaper guild. Got a free new world to build. Meet the people, that's a thrill. All together fits the bill.